All right. Hey, team. Welcome to Colby Yashi Maru, the show where devs all over the world boldly face off against the most logical tools on the web. I'm Colby Fayok, your Space Jelly Commander and host of today's challenge. Today, we have Cunning Kevin Cunningham with his back for his second time. Kevin is a freelance developer and educator, and you might have seen some of his awesome courses on Egghead for Headless WordPress and Vue 3. Let's bring him in. What's up, Kevin? Do hey, you want to add anything else to that intro? I think that, that pretty much sums it up. Yep, I'm developing or educating or educating about developing or developing about educating. So yeah, those things kind of are kind of all merged into one now, which is a lot of fun. That's awesome. That's awesome. Cool. Well, I'm excited to get into this. If you're mm -hmm. new to Kolbyashi Maru, our guests will have one hour to complete their challenge. I'll also be asking questions along the way. And because of the topic, it might be a dad joke or two. But if you have questions, please make sure to send them over to the chat and we'll get them answered for you. So today, Kevin is going to face off against building a baby Tamagotchi app in Vue. If he doesn't finish, all's not lost. We'll see if he can have time to finish up the project or we'll chat about what the next steps would be. So Kevin, do you want to give a little bit about what the tools are going to be using before we dive in and maybe a dad joke or two? <laughs> sure. Um, so we are, Colby is, is soon to be a new father of a, of a new son, which is very exciting. Um, and as a, as you know, a, a seasoned dad of, um, you know, eight, eight years, um, I thought that I could lend Colby some, some of my amazing wisdom. And what we would do is model our child as a state machine. So we're going to use some X state to, to model our child as a state machine. Think about the various states they might be in, the various things that might transfer them from one state to another. And then we'll bring that state machine with us into view. Um, we we'll use some view three we we'll use, and we'll see if we can, um, link it up to some buttons and some timeouts that are going to move around our state machine randomly turning our making our baby's diaper get full randomly making our baby get hungry and various things that that we might be able to do maybe randomly when the baby's sleeping creating a loud noise now we might be too ambitious that's the aim that we're trying to achieve and i i designed i designed it earlier on so um i've got the look um, functionality where we'll see how we get on <laughs> but i think it's appropriate right because all this anxiety that's building up it's helping me get ready right so we'll exactly. see how it goes exactly. cool so i'm going to cool. put on your screen and also if you're ready i'm going to get the timer started then do it all right three two one let's go Cool. Okay. So um, if you haven't used XState before, and I think we were just chatting before the call, Colby, and you're, you're, you've wanted to use XState, but you haven't used it yet. Um, exactly. XState is, is like a really cool um, way to capture state um, and to describe in a really um, clear and logical way, like how you can move between one state to another. Um, and what's really cool is that David, um, David P Piano, um, has produced who, who's the um maintainer of x state and the creator of x state has also made this cool tool called x state visualizer which helps us be able to build up our states and to see how they might link together so i've just opened it up with this um x state.js slash viz and you can see it starts off with a normal fetch machine um, and in the fetch machine you can see it's got um an id for the actual machine do i need to make that a bit bigger as you squint at it oh, uh, so, no, that's good that's helpful <laughs> um so we've got like the id for the fetch we have the initial state the initial state that we want to be in and we have this context variable for retries um and then we have a list of the states and so we've got an object with the, the states so idle loading success and failure are our states here and inside that object, we have this on property that um, is, just, is saying, if I receive a particular event, what's the new state I'm going to add on to? Where am I going to go? So if I'm idle and I get fetch, I'm going to move to loading. If I'm in loading, if I resolve, I'm going to go to success and then I'm done. If I reject, I'm going to go to failure and then I'm going to retry. And so you can see I've got on retry, we're going to I'm, we're going to increase the number of retries by one. And that was that context variable up there. But we don't need any of these states. No way, Jose, because babies don't have any of those states. So let's get rid of those. <laughs> um, and let's think about some of the states that our, our newborn baby is likely to be in, right? So Teach me. 
teach me well so the first one that's that's pretty important is we want our our newborn baby might be sleeping right so that's going to be an important state that we that we want our baby to be in um and um let's let's do let's we'll think about our transitions in a minute so our baby might be crying so are these crying considered er error states no, these are just states that our machine could be in. So they could be. Oh, they're, I was making they're, a joke. <laughs> they're neither good nor bad. You know, it, it, like fair, our fair. baby, you be, be kind to cry. And crying is not a bad thing. It's a way to communicate fair, that you're a fair, small, fair. you're a small, so a small person. Um, but they might be crying. And then we might have some, you know, there might be some things going on physically. So what physically might be going on with your newborn Colby that we might need to consider? Hungry hungry yeah okay so we need to we, that's an important one um anything else let's see eating we got eat, eating from the chat yeah yeah so i will have hungry and then i guess if we're um if we're not hungry we can have an an event in there which will maybe be eating yeah and then what state okay, would we so go you... to uh, what state would we go okay. to after we eat well, then, what do you reckon if we had like Any, anyone have anything else yeah diaper diaper full, full. <laughs> yeah i've got that there um i'm using that for dirty but yeah i don't mean that it's not a bad thing but like a full diaper right i'm going with a um i was calling it dirty um and then i guess at some point hopefully we want to like on um changing um we want to think about maybe what would happen there yeah um I really have appreciate you your optimism you... about all these states because they're not bad yeah. things. They're all great no. things. Yeah, exactly. They're all great things. Like, like if you'd be worried if your diaper isn't, if your if your son's diaper isn't being full in a number of, after a, after a number of days, uh, <laughs> there's something to be worried about. I did about learn there. that in the videos. Brilliant, brilliant. So what else we've got? Sleeping, crying, hungry dirty or yeah that, that feels quite to mental that word dirty um like maybe diaper full like playing yeah yep yeah. um diaper full um, yeah what if someone come up with a better state that's less feels less judgmental than um let's um yeah i, I like laughing um and we yeah, can kind of have that for one. for maybe is that going to be the same as playing or different for playing i didn't get enough pictures for all of these states so so, but we can get new pictures. That's also fine. So if I hit update here, we can see I've done something wrong, which is always good. Um, probably because I haven't declared a state here inside these on objects. So for the moment, I wonder if it lets me, yeah, for the moment, let's comment. I thought maybe guys. you have an extra, thought maybe you have an extra closing bracket there. Maybe not. That's also possible. Um, yeah, so let's see if that's the job. Hmm. Um, I tell you what, here's one I made earlier that we can, we can, um, we can, um, and, and that's probably the last time I'm going to be able to say that during the stream, by the way. So like, enjoy yeah. it. <laughs> um, we can, we can, um, update these. Why is that not updating now? It's not complaining, but it should be updating. But anyway, um, so I've got sleeping on sleeping we've got loud noise or the morning so loud noise after you're sleeping might bring it to crying might be bring a son to crying where when you rock them they might get the happy and when they're happy they might poo in which case we've got like a full diaper and they might yawn in which case they're tired so we forgot tired when we were when we were modeling it earlier on so yes, we, we forgot did. to we forgot a tired state um and we forgot and, and crying i know what the problem is it's the initial state so our initial state is that our our lovely child is going to start us happy. And look at that beautiful state diagram. Look at that. So our I love it. Our state diagram. So so we can now click on the event. So our child poos, and now our current state is dirty. We're going to clean that, and we're going to go back to happy. So yeah, do we have a better word for dirty? Did we set aside on full nappy for that? Or full? Sorry, in in the UK we call them night nappies. I yeah, know I in, think diapers were US friendly, but hey, we're yeah. global here. Well, I, I recognize I recognize that you're the you know you're the new dad here, so I'll I'll I'll, I'll I'll help I'll help you out with the with the language. So yeah, so we start happy, we might poo, then we've got a full diaper, so we might clean that diaper and back to being hyper. Happy <laughs> hyper too, possibly. And yawning means we're tired, then we might rock them when they're yawning, which might end to sleeping. 
but maybe we don't rock them in time and they go to crying. Um, like, I don't, like, I, that'd be interesting. Like, maybe if tired, um, like, maybe um, ignored. <laughs> the ignored event would send a, a yawning baby to crying, potentially. So we're happy, we yawn, and then we could be ignored, and then we're crying. But then maybe you're rocked back to happy, yawn again, rock into sleeping. Um, we've got, like, a loud noise of crying. So if we're sleeping, then our loud noise makes us cry. So we might rock back to happy. Um, and then, yeah. So so I thought, what's the this event? This is beautiful. This is a beautiful way to visualize this. Yeah, it's cool, isn't it? So what's the, like, what's the event that, that if you're happy, that makes you, you think you're hungry? And I went with rumble, like a tummy rumble. Like if the tummy's okay. rumbling, the, the, but maybe it's like in the event. Maybe we could tighten that up a bit. And then um, we feed the baby and they're back to being happy again. So like we've captured, I think, all of all of um, like newborn babies um, in this in the state machine. I think we're we're ready to to go and see if we can get captured in code as well. Oh, sorry. Oh, that's right. This is my <laughs> this is my um, every 15 minutes. My computer reminds me to take a break from my screen. Um, so it's focused. I need minutes. that. I need to look outside my window for 20 seconds for a little bit, but it's almost there. But Hopefully yeah. you have a good view. <laughs> um, it's it's my back garden. So yeah, it's pretty good. It's oh, fine. Nice. Um, cool. So what we're going to do now is we're going to see if we can take the state machine and do and create something that looks visually that captured this kind of thing, but in a Tamagotchi. Um, and we'll see how well we get on with that. So so I'm going to put the state machine to the side for a little bit until we're ready for ready to deal with it. I've got a terminal with a completely empty project, um, and I'm going to um, create a new app. Um, and I'm we're working in view three today, um, and so we're going to view create, and we want to create in this Colby directory and in, in my playground. Um, and let's see how we get on there. I want to create in the current directory. Yes, I do. Um, I want to use view three and I'll just use the defaults. There's nothing specifically I don't want to do. And there's only two project dependencies that I'm going to need once this is loaded up, specifically um, XDIP. And there's an XDIP view library that we're going to use as well. So we're going to need both of nice. those. We're going to need both of those ready to go. But I'm um, guessing, generally speaking, this uh, view create is similar to what I'd be familiar with, like a uh, next create, right? Just installs yeah. all the dependencies and all the, yeah. you know. Yes, yeah. nice. it, it's it's up and running, and and actually, the the CLI tool isn't um, we didn't look at as well. Maybe we we should have done. Sorry, but the CLI tool um, we can we can configure some of those initial starting blocks as well. So what we went for kind of the the default view three setup, but there were ways that we could add in view router. We could add in various other bits of the view ecosystem um, from scratch, from the, from the CLI with, which may, makes there much less for us to be able to do or have to do rather. Yeah. When things are up and running. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, so, so Venkata said this is the first tutorial session they've been on with view. I'm Ooh. not super familiar with view myself. So I find this interesting as well. Yeah, well, I heard that someone's brought out um, a beginning view three course on Egghead recently, um, so you should check it out. <laughs> yes, and I will definitely be posting a link to that. <laughs> um, so yeah, for people who are coming from a React background, um, I'll I'll sort of call out to some of the things that are the diff are the same or different um, when for for. Um, for Vue. Um, I actually, most of my professional development is still in React and Next. Um, I do some stuff in Vue, um, but most of my professional stuff is still in React. But I love Vue. I think it's a, an awesome project and I'm, I love teaching with it and through it. Um, I think, I, think I just got oh. a shout out. I think I just got a shout out Dave here. I think it's the first dad joke, right? My first view of Vue. Well done. It. Well, done. he he should get it. If he doesn't have a space jelly sticker, he should get. He we should send there one. We, we send one to him for sure. Um, in my view, view is yeah, cool. Um, oh, and there we go. Okay, so, um, just a quick look at the architecture. Um, we've got like most of the like um create React app, like um Colby's WordPress Next Starter, like um, lots of these other projects. Um, we have a source directory, um, our node modules directory, and our um, and our um, 
public directory. Um, a public directory then has like the the index file that our app will be mounted onto. Um, so we've got a div in here that where our our what our app would be mounted onto. View out of the box is not SSR, um, so it's not mm. server side rendered. So it is it is the typical original Create React SPA experience where we're delivering the HTML and the JavaScript, and our browser is doing the work of mounting the application onto the browser. And I was say, it's app. interesting that it shows the no script, and that's probably why, right? Yep, exactly. So no script there is a hey, you should have had it. Um, so yep. So then we have our source. And inside um, our, um, yeah, exactly, Nuxt is the equivalent to Next. So um, 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 Vincato okay. is pointing that out. So so in, in the same way, React is, you know, client side entirely. And um, we get Next to be able to add in some of that um, server side rendered beauty and, and or, or Gatsby, sorry, Gatsby also helps us to do the server side render. Um, but there are there are those, those things, those projects going on. Um, in the view in the view community, um, Nuxt, um, not Next, Nuxt is the um, is the framework that um, does that similar work um, for Vue. Um, so you can see here, and um, we've got a main.js, which is the same main.js that is being imported in, the, not in there. Hmm. Anyway, um, so I can see it. Um, so it's mounting onto the element that's got an ID of app, and we can see in our doof over here. So that's what that's where it's being mounted to. So it will replace that entirely. The um, this the, you can see here the build files get auto injected down here during the build process. So that's why. So is that is that index.js or index.html file? Is that basically your template for the view project? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I thought that was output for a second, so that makes yeah. more sense. Yeah, it's the template. So, um, the build files, so the the script tags get auto injected down here, and that then what's executed to to mount in there, um, and then our view components. Um, view components are made up of three parts in our single page. Um, in our single page components, which is which I think is really cool. It's really nice architecture. Um, in each um. Well, it's kind of like um, um, my friend um, Philo talks about um, like cake, slices of cake, and he did a talk a few years ago about how um, this large, very tall rainbow cake, um, it looks white on the outside, but when you slice it, um, there's like different layers of color all the way down. So it's that kind of, that kind of there. I mean, I mean he, it's that single slice that has a bit of everything in it. And view components are a mm. bit like that. It has a bit the template that's relevant to there. So that's the the HTML that's relevant to that particular component. The script, so the logic that's relevant to that component. Be quiet, Space Jelly. I know 15 minutes have gone. And then the style, um, <laughs> which is specific for that component. Um, and with the style, they can be scoped um, for the particular component. So we can do nice things like, um, you know, where in um, React, we might have um, style components. In Vue, we don't need, need that. So I can style images in here. And if that is scoped, like so, then only images in this component are going to be affected by that style. So like out of the box, we have that nice. kind of um, that kind of styling by by element if we want it, which is pretty sweet. Is it pretty uh like is it pretty diverse in terms of people using different ways of styling in the view community or is it pretty mm. like are p people pretty adamant on using like that style? Um, they're pretty. Style? It's it's pre it's pretty diverse. I mean, if this is my autocomplete, um, if if I can get it. So <laughs> this is so if this tells you this is what um so VS yeah. Code's autocomplete does. <laughs> so you can see <laughs> yeah. the, 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 it's just the this is you know any of these is what S one might be using Fair in enough. order to in order to do their style so i thought that answered that question <laughs> yeah <it does. laughs> cool okay so um let's um yarn serve this app and, and that was something i'd be used to it's like an um, npm or or yarn dev oh i see i did it again it's yarn serve <laughs> so um and that does everything we'd expect it does the build process um and it starts the it starts the um web server so we can have a look so let's have a a peek at what we got so yeah so just to there we go. there we go to kind of match with what we got so excuse me um over here ooh, let's move make you smaller so that we can see you side by side 
Um, okay, so we've got our our image, which is related to that image. And so if we take it away, it rebuilds and it's gone. So it does all that hot reloading stuff that we know and love. And then we're using this hello world component and we're passing in a prop of messages. So that feels very, if I'm coming from React land, that feels like, yeah, I know what's going on there. That feels comfortable. Um, so if I jump over to that hello world component, um, we can see um, the, the message prop is received down here. So that's slightly different. That's very different, actually, from React. So we're, we receive yeah. the props um, and we um, we type them. So we have to pass the type that the prop's going to be. And then we um, in view we have double curly braces for interpolation um, inside of the inside of the HTML. Um, and it is HTML that we're using rather than JSX. Um, and so like this is this is um, and the view is going through this html and swapping out things that are in curly braces for um rendered or or interpolated values so that sounds more of like a traditional templating language mm. then right yeah, yeah like if you if you played with handlebars um in back in the day exactly. then yeah. then you're then you're a very happy person when you come to this part to, to this part of the view um experience and like anything you know you, we can um we can carry out um operations on on the um props here um which which gets them which changes what's happening in the dom but it doesn't change the underlying data so if we look at the view um here we can see that the prop itself hasn't changed nice. okay. but what but we we can see that our experience of the prop has changed in the dom because because we're there right but that's kind of that's where we'll we'll kind of leave. Let's um, strip out all of this stuff, which is very kindly inviting us to or welcoming us to to the view community. We just say bye to that, um, and we probably don't need um, the um, image over there either. So let's get rid of that. So go cool. like bye world, bye world. Yeah, get it. Get Goodbye it. world. I love it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So. So, so um, I'm I'm not going to bother changing the name of the component. We could change it to BAB, um, but um, I what I did earlier, I can pull the Tamagotchi, was um, I brought all of my design skills to the table. This is literally it. There's nothing left, um, and to be able to produce um, my space jelly Tamagotchi. It's so cute. Um, oh, it's pretty good. I really want to be able to get a theme, a skinned Tamagotchi just so yeah. I can get this design. Yeah, it's very cool, isn't it? So yeah, so this was this was my um what I was teaching a course today, but this is during my lunch break. I, I made up a I made up a Tamagotchi for for you, just for you. Um and so like ideally we'll want to like uh, in this display to replace it with a picture of a small child. And so I went away and collected some small children. Um who who may or may not be you know we have um crying child we have um child with a dirty diaper we have slightly <laughs> happy child we have hungry child we have sleeping child and we have tired child so uh, i collected some babies for some of these states and the idea is that as we move through the states that the image inside of our tamagotchi would update and we pressed one of these buttons that's going to either and my initial plan and we can explore this was that one button would change the diaper one would rock and one would feed like they feel like the the external things that we can do to to yeah, help encourage yeah. our small person to to um to cope with life well um, i think that makes sense yeah so let's see what we can do so um we've got our tamagotchi we have our state machine Let's get our state machine into view first of all, and we can render our state and see and see what what's going on. So, um, the first thing we'll do is we're going to um, in, in, so inside script. Basically, I can I don't need any of this styling just at the moment either. Um, so let's just empty that out. Um, inside script, uh, I don't need any props. And yeah, cool. I'm going to um, import create machine from xdip and you know it's it's a typical um <clears throat> import that anyone will be familiar with what's what's slightly um stricter 
than JavaScript or than re in React than um, than the what's slightly stricter in Vue than in React is that um, it will error in the dev machine if you have an import that you don't use. Um, so so it's very strict about oi. You imported that thing over there. What do you not? Why? Why bother importing it if you're not going to use it? And so it will actually create an error um, with, when you when um, that's happening. And I'm also going huh. to import use machine from X state view. On one ah. hand, it's like I, I like that idea to keep things clean, but on the other mm. hand, that feels more like a linting thing. Yeah, it's quite. It's I, I find it sometimes quite oppressive. It's like leave me alone. I, I I'm <laughs> going to get to it. Stop shouting at me, machine. Um, no, I'm I'm just realizing before I do that is I've forgotten to install both of those, and I get a nice little um hint that gives me actually. I'm, it's funny. That's interesting. I hadn't noticed that before. Um, so the the create react the. The view create um, command uses yarn, but this error is suggesting to use um, mm. to use npm, which seems bizarre to me. But um, hey, what do I know? Um, so let's go to playground Colby and let's do um, yarn add those two libraries. So xstate is the the library that um, that David has created. Um, the xstate view library is actually one that. Um, was used by um, that was created was contributed by the community, um, nice. so so that so that's pretty cool. Um, so now our errors change to say that you know they've been imported but not used, but we're getting there. Stop shouting at us! Oh, goodness. oh, so technically it is they are using linting for that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I think it's ES lint about it. There, there. It's an error. It's an ES lint loader, but it's an error rather than um, a warning or so. It yeah. stops it actually. That feels. That feels mean to me. It feels like one alone. thing that's interesting. I find, I don't know if you played around with the new Next.js 11, but one thing that's interesting is like Next.js 11 does the complete opposite, where it only throws <laughs> like warnings and errors on build. So like mm. you have to get to that build process, which you might not do locally before you yeah. hit that. Uh, yeah, I, that, that's tripped me up a few times where I was like, it's all working, and I pushed it up to Vercel, and then Vercel says, no, that build feels like what? Yep, yep, um, yep. And yeah, it's feel yeah. I would like um. Like maybe, I, maybe I should have a husky hook or something that um yep. that like does the build locally before it pushes up. That probably feels like a like a better thing to do. I have a nice but tutorial about anyway. that. Oh good. I should I should catch that up. Should drop that in. Okay, so let's um make a baby machine. And I'm not talking about um any any of either of our wives, but let's um we're going to have create and we're going to use the create machine. And what's really cool is that um that structure that we created in the visualizer over here can oh we don't need that context oops um we don't need that context and our id is probably baby machine baby um doesn't matter but hey why not um we can just take that whole um object and paste it in here which feels pretty sweet have i uh i been too smart missed, um, it. missed it cool so my linter didn't cry about that so yeah cool so we've got our baby um was I that guess a pun I... intended yeah your <laughs> linter didn't cry about it yeah exactly he didn't cry if, otherwise we'd have to rock our linter to get it back to happy state because that's some crying on rock leads to happy so so we're good um cool so we have our um we have our baby machine hi carmen um, we have our baby machine, um, and now we want to use our machine. So to do that, I'm going to use so um, back in so view still view has lifecycle hooks like um, like uh, React used to have or right React dolls, but we don't normally use them. We use use effect to be able to to simulate that same kind of behavior, but um, but React replaced that kind of behavior, re replaced lifecycle hook dependencies with um, hooks, right? So we've got our use effect, we've got our use state, we've got our custom hooks that can reach out, we've got use memo, we've got lots of fun things there. Now, in Vue 3, there's the Vue 3 composition API. And the Vue 3 composition API, I would say, and some people might disagree with me, is a lot like hooks for Vue. Um, and it has that same kind of, we can do that same kind of thing going on here. 
Um, so I'm going to you and we access the composition API with the setup um, function inside of the inside of this component that is exported by default from every view component. Um, so in here, I'm going to and you'll see why I think this looks like a hook. I'm going to X, I'm going to destructure state and send from use machine um, where I'm going to pass in our baby machine. That doesn't look like that. Like not, does that not feel like a hook? Come on, come on. Just a little bit. Just, Just a little, little bit. bit, right. And then I'm going to return um, state and send. And that makes state available to me in the DOM um, and as something I can play mm -hmm. with. So up here, if we remember, what was the initial state of our baby? Can you remember? It was happy, right? It was happy, of course. Initial state of our baby. So let's let's render the state of our baby um, into our DOM. And have I started the server again? I have. Oh, cool. Um, so here, where's the, what have I done wrong? Oh, state of value. Happy baby! Yay, we're happy! Yay! So we have a happy baby, cool. Um, and what we want to do is we want to, for the moment, let's start off by having some explicit buttons we can push to simulate, to see how we can change that behavior. And then we'll think about how we might. Um, so my thought is we can, some of these we can have like set timeouts that, um, so the hungry thing might happen over every every 40 seconds. We might make our baby Brilliant. hungry. Um, and so we can, and for sure some of these we'll send events and we'll see we'll see what happens when, when that happens. So, but for the moment, let's start off with some buttons um, and let's, um, and we're happy. Um, I'll bring the state visualizer down here. What what event should we what what event should we start with from Happy? Who yawn rumble? Anyone for the chat? Maybe let's go with Rumble since that's Rumble. Feels, yeah. feels less, Where less do you want to go? Oh, oh Dave, Dave says Dave poo. The poo. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make our baby poo. Okay. Imagine if you had okay. a button. Fair imagine enough. if you had a button that made your baby poo. Okay, so we got our button, made it poo, here we go. Now, at the moment, unsurprisingly, this button does nothing, can you it? Um, and so what we've got to do is, um, so we, I've said that this is not JSX, this is HTML. Um, and we have double curly braces inside of the HTML to be able to declare to view how you should do something. But inside the attributes of the element, we have what are called the view directives um, that tell you there's something you need to do here. You might need to attach an event listener. You might need to um, compute some styles and apply those. You might need to conditionally render this element or is that space jelly again? Yeah, it is. 30 minutes past. We don't have to be on a strict time limit. It's just yeah. for fun. I, I talk too much. That's my problem. Um, and so, um, so I'm making too many jokes. Well, you're, yeah. Um, I guess it's it's being able to poop to order. That's the kind of that's the thing there. <laughs> and all of the um, all of these view directives um, start with v dash. And you can see my auto completer here: v bind, v cloak, v else, v else if, v for, v html, v f, v model, v on, v on. So there's there's loads there's loads of these that we can we can kind of do. And, and my um, my type hinting. Like it's pretty cool. It tells me the V on attaches an event listener to an element, which is exactly what we want to do. That's handy. So we do V on, colon, and then the event that we want to attach the event listener to. So in this case, we want to, to attach the event listener to a click. So V on click equals. And this is different from React and took me a while to get used to, to be honest, is that um when so in the Outside of the attributes, we use double curly braces and we're interpolating everything inside the double curly braces as HTML. Inside of the attributes, um, anything in quotes after a V, um, v a view directive will be in interpolated as JS. So anything I type in here will be interpolated as JS. So if this happens, I'm going to use send, which was made available to me when, when I destructured it from my machine over there. And the event I want to send to remind us when we is poo. Okay. Capital for poo. So I want to send poo. Okay. Brilliant. What have we done wrong? Um, is it the double quotes going to mess that up? 
Ah, that's exactly what leveled that up. Thank you. Those quotes would confuse the heck out of me. I'm sure yeah. I'm used to it, but yeah, you get used to it for sure, right? And and I'm sure people who who are coming from from view into React get annoyed with putting curly braces inside of attributes. You're like, what are you talking about? That's ridiculous. Right. But yeah. So here, so if we click poo now, hopefully we're going to have a full diaper. Full diaper. Cool. Okay. Yay. Okay. So um, we can start thinking about other events you might do. So after a full diaper, we want to clean. So let's um, clean that diaper. So clean, happy, poo, full diaper, clean, happy. So, I mean, what's nice yeah. about, I mean, if for people who haven't played with X-State before, like ho hopefully it's just like, oh, actually it's not that bad. It's quite cool. Um, and what's what I really like about X-State, and one of the things that um, I think wins me over is that um, when we capture all possible states of our baby, our sleeping, hungry, full diaper, tired, happy, we crying, we could add on more, more, more states then we've got a very and and th we it makes us think about how we transition from one state to another and it makes us think about that really clearly like how do you get from hungry to yeah. happy and how do you get like what, what does that actually mean and what type of event would actually cause that to happen um, if and if it's almost like a mm -hmm. ux wire flow if you're familiar with like doing those mm -hmm. kind of things yep Yep, it is exactly um, and state machines aren't new you know they're invented in the 80s um but like and that's almost what makes them great is that they, they come from people having thought about the problem of state quite deeply and thinking ah this is something that could solve it um because i know that in in code that i write i'm sometimes testing two or three or four booleans that are getting to that are being combined to create like the post the outcome you know is a user logged in are they authorized to see this page and um, have they seen this page in the past seven days have you know you can imagine like a, a nested amount of um, booleans that are being that are being tested in order to display or not display an element in order to declare what kind of state that's in and like there are powers there's a power uh there it's an exponential growth isn't it for every boolean we add you know one boolean there's two possibilities two there's four three there's eight mm. four there's 16. you know you add in you know you, several more and you're up to 64 possible states of which actually you only care about three of them but you need to defensively code for Yes, you're right. into that kind of state. Whereas the state machine says, hey, these are the states that I'm, I care about. And these are the only states that I'm going to let this machine get into. And there are very clear routes through how to get from one state to another. So I'm not ending up with a, a sleeping, crying, hungry baby. That's maybe that's yeah. possible but we're in our, in our in our scenario our baby is going to do one of these things at a time and so this is stopping us being able to be in one of those states does that make sense it does yeah if anybody has any questions in the chat definitely make sure that you ask them yeah I do otherwise i'll just keep talking um <laughs> so um let's bring over our images that i have painstakingly um or have painstakingly got from the web um so instead of having our so i think let's see i think i have i change this to full diaper um i think i have an image for every state in our machine so let's just double check sleeping sleeping hungry hungry full diaper full diaper tired tired happy happy I should have done these in alphabetical order. Crying, crying, cool. Uh, <laughs> okay, so we've got um, we have uh, each of those states being represented. So above our um, above our um, state value, let's put the let's get the image in that is going to be represented by by that um, by that crying baby. So to start off with, I'll just check I can get images crying .jpeg just to make sure that I know. It's going to the right spot. So start with happy, right? Okay, cool. There's our right. there's, there's our baby there. Okay, so like we can see, well, actually, this looks like it wants to be like an, an interpolation, um, and we want to replace this word with the state dot value. That you know that that's that's what we're going to do. So, um, with v on colon, there's a really cool thing that because we use v on all the time, views like hey, instead of doing view on colon do at 
and the behavior is exactly the same. Mm. So, okay. so that's that tidies things up, and actually it reads better. It's right? just a shorthand. Yeah, just yeah. a shorthand. It's still V on colon under the hood, but at so at a click, do this, and I kind of you can kind of see that. And yeah. equally, I want to bind the source value like this, and I want it to be. Um, I'm going to create a, a computed property that's going to do this work for us. So let's see what, where we can do that. Is so there down, a shorthand for bind or is there only um, a shorthand yeah, there, for Yeah, there is. Oh, thanks for asking. Bind, sort of for bind is actually just the colon. Oh, so, okay. we, so, so the colon in front of a property is binding that onto there. So let's bind this to image source because I've got really imaginative um, variable names that I like to deal with. Um, Very. Yeah, no, I think so. Um, so what I'm going to do is um, I've got my setup and I'm going to um, introduce this function computed, um, which is a, ooh, which is a, um, I sometimes get this run the wrong way. So give me a second to look something up. Um, no sorry. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Let me find. Yeah, so it's a it's a key rather than a function. Cool. So it's an object that has um, that returns um, which is which is full of functions, and the functions um, return. It's the is returned as a prop name that I can access. So whatever okay. I return from here will be accessible in my DOM as image source up here. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to return and it was forward slash images and then it was um, state, oh, this, because I'm inside the object, this dot state dot value dot JPEG. Um, cool. And is that cried? Is it still that? Yeah. There we, there so we there's go. Our hey. There's our happy baby. Then we're going to poo. <laughs> 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 and then we're going to clean them. <laughs> so, Beautiful. <laughs> it's amazing. So um, our, our, the pictures I've chosen make our baby change gender and race all the way through this experience. So, you know, it's like, like someone's baby might be represented somewhere. So, so you have. <laughs> I feel very sad for this poor boy. He needs <laughs> not die for change. <laughs> um, cool. Okay. So, um, right. Hi. Hmm. This is where my lack of um, front end abilities come to the fore. So, um, and where I would I would bring in Tailwind, but I might need to not do that. So, in here. Let's give this a class of like image container. I don't know. And so help me here, cool base. So what I'm gonna do, so my image container like is going to have like a width of or a max width of like if you want to make it responsive, yeah. Yeah. How is um, the how is the frame going to be? added on top is it like a transparent thing so so the idea is that we'll we'll make it transparent so that so they'll be like like on top, beside behind each other but i don't think okay. we'll get that far in the next 15 minutes Colby. Okay, let's okay. just be realistic about it. <laughs> <laughs> Fair enough. About the so let's um give them like let's give it a, a a width the container and width of like um i don't know um 300 pixels what's that do for us nothing brilliant i think i made it a little bit smaller Oh yeah, a little bit smaller. Um, I've yeah. So and then um, margin auto margin zero and auto yeah zero auto. What are you doing over there, baby? What? Oh, it's it's are they is, doing that, over there? is it auto auto? So it should if it's a block. Oh wait, so images are in line by default. You might have to make it display block in order for that to work properly. The image display. Oh wait, block. that's the image container. Yeah, I was hoping that's what I was hoping to wrap it. But you reckon you, you reckon I can style the image itself? I think I, so. I, and so and display block first. Right, I'm gonna stop after this because this is like the extent of my my 
like uh hey that looks a bit better i think yeah, so okay. yeah clean poo okay cool that feels less less jumpy around i maybe yeah. would have selected images that are going to fit the frame better but you know like you you, you need to invite on can. better you need to buy invite on better class of guests for that kind of forward thinking um <laughs> okay so we have our we have our pooing let's um let's make our baby yawn and yeah let's um let's think about all the things so we all of our um all of our possible actions that we want to send um and we'll see what happens when um because what, what's interesting then is what happens when we send an action that our current state doesn't have a, a resolver for, doesn't know what mm. to do with, with that. So that's, that feels like a useful thing to do. So let's try and give buttons for all of these. And again, I think that eventually these would, um, some of these we would only ever trigger um, in a in a callback, in a set timeout right. function or in a random function. Some of them we would, um, some of them we would um because really the button should be the only actions that we can take right exactly so the yeah so we're not going to the, we're not going to have a button that's going to cause the baby to yawn um but i guess we could ignore the baby so <laughs> do uh in the chat do you want to give a quick refresher on x state just a high level overview quick um just a quick like one-liner about what x state is oh yeah cool so x state is a library or is a is a way to visualize and talk about state in a um in like in, in, a, in a closed way so we can describe all of the possible states our system can be in or our baby and so we listed them as like happy full diapers sleeping hungry tired and crying and all of the actions or events that might lead the baby from one state to another so if the, the baby poos it might then have a full diaper and then we clean it so it gets to be happy again it would be yawns if tired we might ignore it in which case it might cry in which case we'd rock it and maybe it would be happy again and then it would yawn again we'd rock it and it would go to sleep so we have this um way to describe the possible states and the possible transitions between each of those states and we we looked at the start of the stream of how we how that looks we have a, a state key which um has a property or has a value of an object and each of these objects are the states that you can see represented in these um, rectangular blocks in our visualizer and then these on are, are is the how how that current state would react to a sent event so if, if i'm hungry and I'm I receive the event of fe of feed, then I'm going to be happy now. I'm going to move to that happy state. If on the happy state, I can see poos. You can kind of see the how the visualizer and the JSON object. It's not it's not a JSON object. It's, a, it's an object object. But you can kind of see how that object literal and the JSON kind of more up to describe the state of our system and we can imagine another state we might have forgotten like playing with things or or watching like a, an animal fly over its head or you know there are lots of things that we can have going on there oh. um but but yeah i hope that's helpful um but i'm going to focus on trying to get the rest of these state buttons in so we're ignoring our baby um what else are we going to rock we got that um feed oh loud noise um loud noise um and last one was morning i think then it's morning time i was trying to think of another uh, something that would happen that the baby would wake up um in a not crying way so now we've got a baby now we have like this very poor tamagotchi where we've got more than three buttons we've got all the buttons in the world so we can um our baby has a full diaper so we'll clean it now the challenge with tamagotchi right is that we um we don't always know what the problem is so let's take away that lovely line that tells us what's wrong with our baby and let's try to guess what's wrong with this baby now actually this is a happy baby we can see that's a happy baby so let's think about something maybe their tummy starting to rumble Ooh. oh so what should we do to this baby to, our, <laughs> to be able to help well we know along? the answer right so i know i know so so in the in the, act, rock in the final and and so yeah so rock so a, a hungry baby is not doing anything for that um and so maybe we have a a set time out that if they've been hungry for a certain period of time that they get to angry we'll have angry in here you know maybe there's something else that's going on here this is our hungry baby we're going to feed them they're back to being happy there's a loud noise that's not doing anything maybe loud noise on happy should make them cry i i don't know I think like, so, yeah. We, yeah so so and that's easy to do so we go to or would happy. they poo on loud noise 
yeah 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 so with loud noise oh that's great i love it so, <laughs> so our happy baby's here there's a loud noise and they've pooed their pants oh. <laughs> so now we need to clean them up and they're back to being happy Abby. genius great so we've captured all of those states um and we can see that we've got the events that we've captured in buttons to be able to help us out here so we're yawn so we're to rock them to sleep oh and it's morning time so we wake up happy so you know we've got this kind of transition through our state machine with these images to help us out so i've given you a very complex tamagotchi so i, I feel like i've delivered um but it's not You've quite delivered de i've delivered um so even the space jelly is telling me i've got much less than 15 minutes now now um i'm you know i'm feeling no, okay. i think you delivered <laughs> <laughs> like we're feeling okay um but yeah i think what we'd try to do so this this so um hmm, hmm. I, i'm not sure i know figma well enough to cut a hole with this um yeah i don't know if i know how to do you that. probably just like add it as a background and like overlay the image on top just for it doesn't have to be pretty, right? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, cool. Well, I have that. So um, let's. I I sent I sent it to you earlier, so it must be in my downloads folder somewhere, right? Um, ba, 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 ba. Do, 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 do. I think it's imaginally called Group Four PNG. Brilliant. So let's call this. Um, <clears throat> oh, it's so cool. I'm so impressed with myself. It really is. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's call it Tama um and let's see what we got so um back in our component here um so you reckon it's a background image i think that's a good shout so um in our tama class we want and i would i wouldn't even bother trying to make it responsive just to get it on the just to get cool. it on there background image equals the url of um images tama dot uh jpeg png oh there's something over there like <laughs> <laughs> i think it's the size probably right yeah 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 so um that's probably a decent enough size so um background not repeat how do i fixed can I, can I so what i would do is um, yes you want my tell opinion. me cool. um, i would i do <laughs> <laughs> i would set a width and then i would set a background size just to get mm -hmm. it going so like maybe set a width of like 400 pixels if the baby's 300 and then we can mm -hmm. scale it as we need to um but then the background size of 400 as well that way it's also um Ooh. the background itself is scaled down to that let's see if that works nice okay. and then now we can uh you probably want to set a height that has something relatively close to what the yeah and that's the 10 minute remaining but um, um i don't know what do you so, think so that sounds good so this is like um that doesn't sound maybe right. put that, like that... maybe put like 600 for now and we'll just see where it looks like yeah. because it's it's not going to be exact because you scaled it right yeah so height is going to be 600 you reckon 65,000. <laughs> just, <000. laughs> just try it yeah <laughs> yep and oh, then okay. background repeat none yeah is that right perfect. background yeah, repeat none i thought that was i could be none. thinking let me double check i thought that would be background repeat. oh it's i think no it's repeat. no repeat yeah they have got there first <laughs> oh thanks dave <laughs> Cool. Um, and then we want to shift that image down a bit. So like, I'm just going to, yeah. I'm, I'm going to do march and top. Yeah, dude, just be, <laughs> hacky, just be hacky about it. <laughs> oh man. And maybe you can put oh, uh, no, on that's... the Tama, on the Tama, maybe put margin zero auto so that it just centers it. Uh -huh. So it's a little easier to see. Margin zero auto. Lovely, okay. lovely lovely um the do i need to do padding top for my image rather than margin top so you have that container on it right i do so, yeah so you could try just putting it on that it's 
just make sure that's what it's actually called. Yep. Give me the container. That seemed to move it all down, didn't it? Yeah, didn't it? Huh. I wonder. Yeah, I don't know why it would move. Padding top it. worked. Oh, yes. Good, good. good. <laughs> <laughs> and then let's um, put all those buttons um, into, into a div and then we can move that down. And the other nice thing is that, um, although like by this point, um, button divs, um, you, you, um, anyone who's been coding in React won't care anymore, but the, you, you're using class rather than class name. Mm -hmm. um, I quite like that. Um, so, uh, so that was a capital D for div. And you shouldn't do what I'm doing, which is bung everything into one component, but you know, hey. Um, yep, so it's dot button div. And let's do like a margin top of like 300 pixels. Cool. Okay, so now nice. pooing baby, cleaning the baby. Like we're getting there. Like we're not, we're not, we're not kind of there. Um, what I'd like to do is like implement one of our random things happening. Like I'd like to make it like like make the baby hungry every once in a while. Yes. Um, that feels like I feel if we can get one of those in, I think I'll be um I don't know what's wrong with this baby. Um, um, <laughs> oh, it was tired. It was. Oh, I just knew. I just knew it rocked. Cool. <laughs> Phew. That, that's what real fatherhood feels like, right there. What's right, wrong right, with right. baby? <laughs> I appreciate the preparation. <laughs> I'll send you this code over. This is daddy care. boot camp. Daddy boot camp, exactly. So, um, what we're going to do is we are going to use the mounted mounted function here so i um, we're going to on mount uh, what we do um we'll set um and this is totally me guessing that this would work i had i, I had a premise i had a thought about this earlier and i thought this might work so let's like every 10 seconds let's this dot send um what we do every 10 seconds um Cry? This dot send. Um, what were they? They probably don't poo every ten minutes, right? No, or seconds. <laughs> so um, yawn. We do yawn every ten seconds. We'll send yawn okay. every ten seconds. Cool. Um, send yawn. Yarn. <laughs> um, they probably do sleep that often, right? Yeah. Well, the, uh, newborn babies don't never stop sleeping. It's great. You need to. I uh, It's good to maximize on that, but also like it's hard to maximize on that. Um, and I'm just going to log that um, I'm sending a yawn event. Okay, so let's see how we're doing. So, 10 seconds. When I bring the show back, I need to implement some hold music. So there Beautiful. we go. So it sent a yawn event, our baby yawning, and then we can um, rock. What do we do? We can help them get to sleep. Then we're in the morning. I and think that's, that's a, I think it's five minutes. I think we're done. I think we managed to five before we I got think that this is beautiful. <laughs> I'm I'm incredibly happy with this. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, well, so like other things we could do. I was thinking so we could have like a random event that um that, that did a loud noise. Um, so um. So can I do a set timeout with a math dot random? Does that get jet did that does the math random got get generated on the initialization of the set timeout and therefore be be fixed? Or do mm. I think it would be whatever the mounted. It would be mm. whenever it's mounted. Yeah. That's what I th that's what I think too. So let's um let's do that anyway, right? So let's um because we'll have lot maybe we live in a loud place. So again, but I'll yeah what you could do is you can create a function inside there that has like send event. And then inside of that send event function, you do math random with that event and then keep calling that function on itself with a set, with a set timeout, like recursively, mm -hmm. or that's just probably overdoing it and you can just do whatever you're doing. <laughs> that, that sounds great. But um, I, I think I see what you're saying, but I don't see what you're saying in the next three minutes. Um, so I'm going to <laughs> console.log a loud noise. Fair. And and then I'm going to do this dot send loud noise, and I'm going to do that um, after I don't know, like ten seconds times math dot um, random. Ooh. Um. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Cool. Refresh. So. 
baby's happy. Let's clear our console. Setting a loud noise. Oh no, our baby's crying. <laughs> and now our baby yawning while they're crying. Um, while there's a loud noise, so um, let's um, uh, rock the baby. Yeah, no, Venkata um, wants to hear actual music. Oh, actual yeah, music play, or do you want to hear actual crying? Actual crying. And that, I, that was my initial thought. That was like my initial idea was to do the actual. Oh yeah, I forgot. It was the a loud noise makes the baby poop. I'd forgotten that. <laughs> 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 genius um and now we have a happy baby so as your gift mm -hmm. to for upcoming fatherhood i gift you this um this this um kobe um space jelly themed baby tamagotchi i feel so honored it's it's beautiful and i feel like it's definitely helps prepare me for fatherhood <laughs> yeah I, I guess what you can do um over the course of um your son's first few months you you can come and um think about the state machine um and you can exactly. add more events and think about different <laughs> different actions that you can send to the state I'm machine recreate that is your son. this on a whiteboard so that Absolutely. as there's new events i can map them out for the Amazing. tamagotchi Amazing, yeah, and then we can sell it, you know, as it, <laughs> we can exactly. for a new fatherhood hill. I think we've exactly. got, we've got, we've, we have, we, there's a market we need to, we need you're to. You're an entrepreneur. Here. <laughs> That'd be great. Cool. Um, the, well, um, have we had time? Almost. Let me remove. Sam, remove one minute, just because I want you to get the success message. Let's see, <laughs> twenty six. See, I don't think I set up seconds, but let's see if I did. 15 seconds. Nope. Oh, it did. There we go. Four, three, two, one. Oh, beautiful. Beautiful. Lovely. You won. <laughs> you did it. You win. Yes. 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 <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> well, cool. Thank you so much, Kevin, for hopping on. This has been a blast. Um, do you want to just really quickly highlight what you actually built here? Mm, yeah, so um, we, we we built a, a, a baby Tamagotchi. So what we've got is a state machine that we thought about. We used XState to model our baby states. Um, we've, we've got our lovely buttons that we can make our baby poo and clean them. We can make them yawn and then rock them to sleep. Um, and we, we've got that journey through the state. We built it with Vue and XState. Um, and we have you collected those images and built our Tamagotchi. Um, and I guess if we're going to take it further, we might have these buttons or the things that only we can do, maybe clean the diaper, rock the baby and um, make a loud noise is probably something we could do, but that, you know, or feed the baby. <laughs> and the rest of these are, are randomly occurring events that are moving to a, a state that we have to resolve. But yeah, um, I'm I'll I'll stick this up on a on a repo if anyone's interested in um, it, yeah. in in improving our Tamagotchi, and um, we can we can have more fun with it. Absolutely, and I'll also include that in, in the description for the replay. So if you're interested in that, definitely check that out. But mm. thank you, Kevin, so much for accepting this challenge. It's been a lot of fun. Um, everybody, please be sure to go check out Kevin on Twitter at do learning, D-O learning, and also check out his courses on egghead.io, which I am going to paste right now in the chat. And unfortunately, it just sent it as markdown, but I think it still created the links. Mm. Anyways, any last words, Kevin? Um, no, thanks for having me and good luck with impending fatherhood. I hope uh, Tamagotchi will um, help you as you think about how to, how to help Anna and your son. <laughs> I really appreciate it. I feel much more prepared than I did this morning. Thank Amazing. you so much. <laughs> right, thanks, everybody. This is Colby signing off. Bye.